well 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 good afternoon good afternoon friends good afternoon <laughs> this is Diane and what a beautiful day this is what a beautiful day this is to just relax and give God thanks for his goodness I am so happy to be back home in the British Virgin Islands yes got in yesterday so I took today off to rest and relax and now I am taking my sweet time doing like a tightrope walk on this dock <laughs> right by where we live just taking in the quiet sounds of you know the lapping of the waves against the docks and just giving God thanks for his goodness the Disney fantasy is docked in Road Town today and that's you know part of the scenery today but I'm just giving God thanks for bringing us back here safely after about three weeks or so away um, our travels took us to the Bahamas first and then on to Jamaica which was just absolutely wonderful both both trips both well both locations was really you know a gift from God in terms of how our lives were blessed because of the different things that we were able to see and take part in and today as I said I'm just giving God thanks to be back on the BVI soil back home you know to give God thanks I must give God thanks especially for keeping us safe on that flight yesterday into St. Thomas you know where the pilot had to abort landing now I've never been on a flight that that has happened before and you know there's a first for everything but I give God thanks because things could have been worse you know one minute everything is looking all nice and sunny beautiful day and as we approached St. Thomas it, it remained beautiful and then by the time the pilot got ready to land this rain just came from out of nowhere and things became a little hazy and rainy and dark and you could tell that visibility was poor and you know I'm sitting in a seat that I could see the plane wings and I don't know a lot about flying but I can tell when <laughs> the wings are getting ready for landing to take place you know the flaps were opened the emergency lights were on and you know that the plane is about to land um, we could also hear the landing gears coming out and then suddenly and without warning we just felt the plane just make a big swoop back up in the air because landing had to be aborted at that time and the pilots had to you know do like a fly around so that the weather that came up suddenly could pass and would you believe as soon as we went back up it was as sunny and bright on the other side as ever you would not believe that we were in the same area that that rain cloud had, and just that heavy rain had just come down by the time the pilot circled around for a few minutes and came back uh, it had cleared up a bit and the runway was very wet so you could tell that a heavy downpouring had just happened but to God be the glory you know he brought us back here to the BVI safely and we're just giving God thanks um, glad to be back but it wasn't pleasant at all to come back you know to this terrible news circulating about the death of um, one young man and then before the night was over before we could even get settled yesterday last night another young man was murdered I mean I, I, I don't even know what to say more than to just say to people it's time to look up because our redemption draweth nigh 
look up friends it's time to look up this is no time to play around this is no time to be fighting and quarreling and having issues with simple things and minor things when people are just losing their lives the young people are losing their lives and while the rest of us can sit at ease in Zion thinking that all is well because you know it's not our family or it's not our friend or whatever we have to understand that these things affect the nation on a whole and I'm not just talking about the impact on things like tourism and if people believe that the place is not safe then they wouldn't come I'm I'm not even going that far yet more than to say people need the Lord people need the Lord all right people need the Lord and we cannot just sit back and be at ease when our young people are dying around us and while I do not know the spiritual condition of any of the young men that died I know that there are quite a few who are not saved who do not know God and they don't see any urgency they don't see any need to change their lives because some believe that some things just cannot happen to them you understand but we have to do more than pray in this season we have to do more than talk in this season we have to reach out to our young people we have to reach out to them find out what's happening in their their head what's happening in their space what's happening in their neck of the woods what's happening in their lives yes we agree many people are private and unless they say something you wouldn't really know what's going on but we have to kind of get up off our laurels as my elders used to say and get more involved get more involved with people uh, the church needs to get back to the business of people we have been distracted over the years many 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 churches have become distracted and I know that we the individuals are the church but we have become distracted we have become distracted with the prosperity gospel we have become distracted with selfishness where we believe that everything is about us and our comfort and our safety and we care nothing about the world that is dying and going to hell in a handbasket so to speak we have to care more than that but the, th the thing is when do we get time to care if we're fighting amongst ourselves so much right when do we get time to care when do we find time to witness and to let the world know that Jesus is still the answer when 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 do we when do we find time for that or is it that we're sitting up in churches fighting over posts fighting over position fighting over who is the greatest in the kingdom of God these are the things that we have been caught up in as the body of Christ no is it everybody that's involved in that sort of thing no but when you put it all together it's it's not good at all it's not good at all and if we are going to win the loss at any cost we have to change our strategy we have to change our tactics and if we have to start by becoming interested in people again we have to start loving people again we have to start paying attention again and understand that it's not about us alone it's about those who are the future remember if we are not caring about the young ones no remember they're gonna be the ones in charge and in power when we get old so what do we want for our future you understand so those of us who say that we are saved sanctified filled with the Holy Ghost on our way to heaven let us remember that 
<laughs> we must not be lazy Christians. Some people just want to go to heaven and rest. Right? They're tired of staying down here. They don't, they don't care for the troubles and the trials. They want to go to heaven and rest. But the Lord has called us to occupy until he comes. So we should be busy doing, working, occupying until he comes. And one of the mandates that we have as people of God is to win the lost. Right? Go to the highways and the byways and compel people to come in. Some of us don't want to go to the highway and any byway. We want to sit in the air-conditioned comfort of the padded pews. And even when we have all of that to our comfort, we still don't want to do anything as regards to evangelism or winning the lost. We think that's the job of the pastor or we think that's the job of the evangelistic um, department leader or those who are on the evangelism team. But no, my friends, it's the responsibility of each of us. How do we do that? We start by looking at the way we live our lives. How do we live? How are we living? Are we a Christian on Sunday only? Or is our lifestyle reflective of holiness 24-7? Are we only Christians when we know that we're under the microscope, when we know that our friends are watching, or the pastor is watching? No. Our lifestyle should be one that draws people to God, the way we live. So you may not take a mic and go to the street corner, but the way you live is maybe or perhaps a bigger testimony than trying to impress somebody on a Sunday morning. It's not how much tongues we speak in that makes us saved. It's not how well we put ourselves together that makes us saved. It is that lifestyle that we live even when we are not under the cameras and the lights and the microscope. You understand? So it's really concerning to me, to be honest, you know, to come back to the BVI to such terrible news. And we, we, we know that bad things happen everywhere. Bad things happen to good people, we know. Um, bad things happen to just about anybody. But we have to become a little bit more concerned as the body of Christ. We have to become more than concerned to the point where we start just hitting the streets and letting people know that Jesus is Lord and he's coming back again soon all right some of the young people they they, they just want to live their lives you know they just want to live uh, some of them have no um, regard for uh, God or the things of God perhaps from experiences they had earlier on in their lives but whatever the reason is it is still our responsibility to reach out to them all right so in just <laughs> greeting everybody today i just felt like putting a little plug in there to remind us that times are perilous times are perilous and we need to pay attention to what's going on around us the bvi is beautiful but we have some things that are going on that are not good or godly and we have to become concerned we must become concerned all right we we, we live in a society where you know some people don't want to deal with the the mess or the bad news stuff you know they want everything to be good all the time and they want the good news but there comes a time when the news is not that good and we have to deal with it we can't run away from it all right so my encouragement today is let each of us take up our cross that cross that we pledge to the lord that we would carry that some of us seem to have forgotten pick up our cross and follow after God because 
that's what he requires and he expects of us and let us change the corner that we're in let us turn our corner upside down for Christ let's do that let's not be afraid let's not be timid because we have a great responsibility and time is running out we don't have a lot of time all right so on this beautiful beautiful Tuesday afternoon I implore us right to reach out to those who are not saved to reach out to the lost to reach out to those who believe that you know they have a lot of time to get themselves right with God okay it's not the Lord's will that any should perish but that all should come to repentance so let us change the way that we have been going about our own lives and remember those who do not know the Lord reach out to them family members friends whoever once you know they're not saved reach out to them all right so may the Lord bless you today and at some point I will start the lives in the morning again I'm, I'm not sure I will do it for this week but as the Lord leads all right so you take care now I just had to stop and do this after you know realizing what a beautiful day day this is you know despite all that's going on around us in the BVI right now but to God be all the glory all right you take care God bless you